Hey everybody, uh, this is Mike, and uh, what I want to do today is show you a little tutorial on a method that I found to bring uh, 3D animation data from Maya into Animate Pro uh, or possibly Harmony. I don't have Harmony, um, but if anyone with Harmony would like to try this out and see if it also works with that, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Um, but anyhow, I own Animate Pro, and uh, uh, I do a lot of sort of uh, 2D, 3D uh, hybrid animation, um, and so there are many situations where I really want to bring a 3D camera um, with locators into a scene, and I can where I can freely draw, uh, you know, for certain situations where the normal workflow would be to render stuff out from Animate uh, onto cards and render those out from Maya, but sometimes you need to pull really tight into it and you can't, really can't get that resolution, and sometimes it just takes a whole ton of PNGs that you have to export, um, and sometimes, you know, it, it just feels nicer to get all your character animation out with the camera baked in. Um, so let's just get into it here. Um, I'm going to start with this little scene. It's a very simple demonstration scene. It's a little camera and it's got a little null here that's uh, two units above the origin. Um, I also have this little sphere here that's going to rise up as the uh, timeline goes forth. So it's just 160 frames long. The camera zips around and follows this little sphere. Let's look at it from the camera's point of view. So, here we go. I'm gonna... So we start in on that, and I've also included some zoom animation because be, uh, because my method also compensates for uh, an animated camera lens. Uh, you know, considering there are all these different presets in Maya cameras, and I want to make sure that information translates correctly into uh, another piece of software. Um, so what I have so far here is this little null, and it has an aim constraint that's tied to the camera. So it will always point to the camera. And, uh, and that's because we're going to put a drawing there, and that drawing really needs to face the camera whole, the whole time, or else it gives away the illusion that it is um, not a, or that it is a card, a two-dimensional card. Now this sphere here is just a sphere. Um, so what I'm going to want to do is create a locator and tie it to that sphere. Basically all the data that we want to export from here will be the camera and locators. We don't want to include any geometry because that's going to clutter our workflow up. Um, and if the camera itself were actually composed of a, of a rig, something that included a lot of parenting, we would actually want to tie a locator to that camera and use the uh, the data from that instead of the actual camera. But in this example, we just have the camera it just has its own, as you can see here, it just exists by itself. It does have an aim, uh, a pointer here, but what we're going to do with all of this stuff is we're going to bake the keyframes. So there's a keyframe for every frame, and any constraints will be uh, nullified by that. So you will get the uh, animation in your data file that you will bring in to Animate Pro. So um, one little thing I want to do here is I want to create a little locator in the middle of the, of the sphere. I don't want to bring the actual sphere in to my project. Um, I just want a locator. I'm going to put a little guy in there, and it's going to be a drawing. And that drawing needs to stay oriented to the camera. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first create a little locator. No, not that guy. Not a construction plane. I said locator. There we go. And then I'm going to select the sphere, and then select our little locator in the outliner, and make a little point constraint. Um, make sure maintain offset is not checked, so it won't go right in there. Um, and then what I want to do to make sure it stays pointed to the camera is select the camera, then the locator, and do an aim constraint. Maintain offset is off, apply, and that should do it. And now you see this little, when the camera view, 
we've got this little X that remains pointed toward the camera. So that's, that is what we want here. So what I'm going to do, and, and this camera starts from, you know, a tight frame of this first locator, just to show you an example of how useful it is to, uh, to do this methodology. Um, so what we need to do next is take the two locators and the camera and go right ahead to Keys Bake Simulation. And that just makes keyframes for every frame on X, Y, and Z of scale, rotation, location, which is just what we want. With those three guys still selected now, I'm going to go to Export Selection. Make sure that I am doing Maya ASCII. And channels, yeah, just channels is fine. That's all you want. Um, and I don't have any geometry uh, selected. That will help this much better. Um, so I'm going to call this Toon Boom Tutorial 2, because I tried this before and I realized there were problems with my scripts. Um, and now that I've fixed them, I'm very excited to show you how this all works. So now we move on to our next part, which is going into Animate Pro. Now one thing that I have done... Uh, before uh, this tutorial is I just rendered out that scene, imported it into uh, an Animate Pro project. As you can see right here, just as a as a quick time, and it brought in the image sequence. Um, but as you can see, there is no actual camera animation. It just stays there looking at this movie right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix that. Um, First thing you need to know uh, in Animate Pro is you got to change your scene settings to make sure that everything goes in the correct way. Um, the default scene settings, uh, now I'm working in HDTV 1920 by 1080 the default alignment is 4x3, 12 fields. And that's sort of a weird, I guess it works for 2D, but it really um, doesn't work translating a cubic 3d space um, so what I've done I've made a preset called cubic and all that is is a one-to-one -one aspect ratio number of units is the same number three ways so I did 24 by 24 by 24 um, that works just fine the quick time I made is uh, 640 by 360 which is the same ratio and that's all that really matters I did it at a low resolution so that it would refresh and play more smoothly um, Ideally, what I would do is, um, wow, what did that do? Let me make sure I got that right. 1920 by 1080, cubic, 24 by, yeah, there we go, okay. So I'll, what I should do here is now just scale this. I'm going to make sure my scale is unifying, it's, and that's one thing you're going to want to do regularly is make sure your scale is locked just to make it a little easier to manipulate. Um, there we go. Enable 3D is probably good as well. There we go. So now we have our 3D space set up. Next, what we want to do is create our camera and our camera peg. And we're going to be bringing in the animation data of the camera. Um, and so what we first need to do is make sure the camera peg uh, and camera share the same 3D space. So what we want to do is make sure this camera peg here is 3D enabled, 3D path, scale. I like to lock it just to keep things consistent. Quaternion is important. Um, and no pivot, that's good. But the camera, you'll see its default, um, sets it back 24 fields because um, it assumes that you want to set that camera back from the origin to look at your picture. I'm going to start this at zero so that now when you look and select the camera, um, here we go. When you select the camera and the peg, they both occupy, occupy the same pivot. 